Welcome to CNS Focus series of interviews from 2018 Regional Consortium meeting of the IBP of the World Health Organization. This initiative is run by a consortium of partners who use proven effective practices to implement and scale up the um, clinical practices and programmatic approaches to improve family planning and reproductive health outcomes. Today we are in conversation with the public health crusader, Ms. Easter Tahrir. Uh, Easter is a founder and director of the Global Health Leaders and Jeevo Joven International at the Public Health Institute or the PHI that is based in California. She also directs and advises global youth engagement and adolescent health projects at the PHI. Her main areas of interest are reproductive and women's health. Welcome, Esther. So I would like to ask you, uh, what are the key priority areas on which PHI focuses regarding sexual and reproductive health and rights of the youth? So the key areas that Public Health Institute focuses on in terms of sexual and reproductive health and rights are adolescent and youth sexual and reproductive health and rights. So our main focus is really around partnering with young people and adolescents around the world in the United States, in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, and particularly here in India through our Youth Champions Initiative program funded by the Packard Foundation and implemented by our Rise Up program at PHI. We're focused on partnering with youth and empowering youth and inspiring youth to make changes in sexual and reproductive health and rights. So we train and build the capacity of young people to be in decision-making opportunities to influence sexual and reproductive health and rights services and laws and policies and also be co-designers of programs. We really believe that we shouldn't be implementing interventions to improve adolescent sexual and reproductive health without including the young people themselves. So the challenges do young people, uh, men and women face in accessing the uh, quality information and services related to sexual and reproductive health? Young people lack access to comprehensive sexuality education. So in most developing countries, there is a there is a lack of comprehensive sexuality education. The government is not committed to implementing consistent and um, comprehensive sexuality education in the schools, in secondary um, or even tertiary schools. And there is also, so young people aren't getting the information, so they lack often the, inf- the needed information, the awareness, the education on what's happening to their bodies, what to expect in terms of changes, um, on the rights they have to demand education, appropriate and scientifically based education, or to access services. Another primary challenge are laws and policies that restrict young people from accessing services or education. So I know, for instance, in India, there are some laws that exist that limit young people's access to contraceptives. And for instance, where we work through our Gohoven International Program in Central America and Honduras, Uh, Emergency contraception is illegal, so young people cannot access the morning after pill or emergency contraception in case of uh, contraceptive failure. So laws and policies that are restrictive is a huge challenge for young people uh, around the world and uh, here in India as well. So how the organizations like PHI can help um, to, uh, to overcome them? We do a lot of training um, and advocacy support for young people to influence policy makers and to have laws passed that youth, national youth laws or uh, national sexual and reproductive health laws that support adolescent sexual and reproductive health access. Um, We also focus on a human rights perspective. So 
not only focusing on young people's access to reproductive health services, but uh, populations that often are excluded, such as um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youth accessing sexuality education and services, or indigenous or rural young people um, having access to education, to clinics that can meet their needs. So uh, I think the Public Health Institute and many IBP organizations are effectively working with young people, but I think that we can all do a lot more um, by providing spaces and opportunities for young people to network and also to educate us um, and be a part of the design and the implementation and the evaluation of our programs and also our research to ensure a youth perspective in uh, all that we work, do. Uh, you mentioned about uh, the implementing best practices. Could you please just elaborate some of the best practices that we need to implement to improve the, uh, the rep uh, reproductive health as well as the general uh, health of, uh, of women? Two practices that are proven to improve sexual and reproductive health um, outcomes for adolescents and youth um, and young women are comprehensive sexuality education, so ensuring that um, at every level of education there is um, sexuality information that is based on evidence and that is age appropriate. Um, and the second is adoles adolescent and youth friendly services, so ensuring that uh, young people who do access services get scientific information and not biases or the opinions or aren't subjected to the values of the providers but are receiving actual uh, scientific evidence-based uh, health services. And for instance, many people believe that young people should not access or should not use contraceptives or that there are certain contraceptives that young people cannot use for medical or health reasons. And yesterday in the IBP meeting, the World Health Organization told us that adolescents can access and use all, can use all contraceptive methods and that there are no medical indications against adolescents using any contraceptive methods. So I think that we need to ensure as implementing organizations on a global level that adolescents and young people uh, and young women have access to youth-friendly services um, have the clinics are open, that the infrastructure exists, that they're known to the adolescents and that they have providers that are trained and ensure that the uh, teachers at the schools have a curriculum that's evidence-based to follow, that they're trained and that they feel comfortable offering the comprehensive sexuality education curriculum. Many governments along with the Indian governments also have committed to uh, national and international goal commitments like 2020 Sustainable Development Goals and uh, Family Planning is uh, 2020. So are we on uh, the track to these targets? There are two primary sustainable development goals that really um, influence or focus on uh, sexual and reproductive health. So one is um, sustainable goal three, which is health and well-being. And one of the targets is to achieve universal access to uh, sexual and reproductive health services. And I think that we're very far from reaching that target um, everywhere in the world. Um, there is no country in the world that has universal access to sexual and reproductive health services. Um, and we've been hearing a lot about the challenges to accessing services, um, in India, for instance, in the last few days, in Nepal, um, in the region. And so I think that to reach this target, the governments are going to really have to uh, double their efforts and uh, put more money and resources and training um, into their health systems to uh, move us towards that target. 
A second um, of the sustainable development goals that influences sexual and reproductive health uh, and family planning is SDG 5, which is gender equity, uh, gender equality. And again, um, the target is to eliminate all forms of violence uh, against women and discrimination against women. And we hear so many accounts of existing violence against women, um, of male partners not wanting their um, female partners or their wives to use modern contraceptive methods. Um, so I think that we have a lot of work to do to reach SDG 5 in terms of gender equality. And it's going to take um, women and adolescents and men working together to um, eliminate violence against women and um, change the attitudes of many men around women uh, to support women to access and to use uh, modern contraceptive methods. What is your message of this uh, IBP initiative? I would say the message of the IBP initiative is that in partnership is the way that we will uh, move towards achieving those sustainable development goals uh, five and three. And in partnership, uh, I don't think we should work isolated by country or by organization. The focus of IBP is that we have over 50 organizations working at both locally in the community as well as globally, and that the organizations really need to work together in a consortium in collaboration to not compete um, or not duplicate our work, but to really maximize and build on each other's work, to share best practices. Um, IBP is focused on sharing best practices to scale up family planning. So I think that uh, in partnership, IBP organizations uh, with youth organizations, with local community-based organizations can actually um, advance family planning, access to family planning, uh, acceptance of family planning, and use of family planning so that men and women around the world can decide um, if and when they want to have children and that they can have uh, healthy families and be um, well and happy and productive members of society and feel that their rights are being respected um, as to how they choose to live their lives. Thank you so much, Esther. Friends, we were listening to Esther Tahrir, Senior Program Director at the Public Health Institute, California. Uh, stay tuned for more information. Be welcome to visit CNS website, www.citizen-new.org.